Okay. And we're here now. Here we are, Rainy Oxford on a Monday. Tom York solo album. Why solo album and why now? <laughs> <laughs> um, we stopped about two and a half years ago. The band that I'm in called Radiohead. Why did we stop? It was getting boring. It just got a bit weird and sort of self-perpetuating thing. And one of the things that I, want, I, I had wanted to do for ages was to get stuck into a bunch of things that I've been mucking around with which didn't fit. You, you said the, the word solo album gave you the heebie-jeebies. What is it about that year? Uh, um, if, it, if it was a solo album, that would sort of... Um, it would demand that, you know, that I'd walked away from the Radiohead thing. Which it basically hadn't, and half the reason for doing it was was because it's something I'd wanted to do for ages. You know, when I talked to the others about it, they like, oh, yeah, please, go and get on with it, you know. You could sort of call it a side project, that would make more sense, but side project demands that it wasn't... It was just a, a doodle, but it wasn't. I mean, I, I went, really went for it with Nigel. I mean, we, we... It was a proper thing. We were trying our best. Mm. I have this vision of you working away at home, just in a little music room, or the shed on a laptop with your acoustic guitar and nothing else was it was it that minimal and, and um, that, it was, that free? Uh, well the, the initial the initial ideas like the the initial sort of sketches for things were kind of like that yeah um, I have a little tiny cupboard basically in my house um, which you really couldn't call a studio uh, with all my stuff in and uh, yeah I would just sort of go in there whenever or when we were on the road I would be doing stuff on a laptop. So when and where did you record? Um, I recorded um, by the sea uh, in the summertime, which was nice. Um, and then recorded in uh, Nigel has a studio in London uh, with a cocktail bar right next to it. That was nice. And uh, and we recorded. We did a lot of work um, in the Radiohead studio as well. Was it initially a bit disorientating, not having the four other guys there? It was. Um, like there was the initial sessions before Nigel got there, where I was, um, I was like just working out how to make the computers work. All I had was was the, the technology, and only half of it was working. So it was quite a. You know, there's definitely a few weeks of the. Uh, what am I doing? You know. And then, once actually I sat down with Nigel and went through the basic ideas, it was like, oh, well, hang on, there, there is something here. And it was actually really exciting because it went from being, you know, uh, doodles to, oh, right, you know, a couple of accidents that make you think, well, this is, this is something that people might actually get. <laughs> is there any sort of feeling that you were getting something out of your system? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a, a real relief to 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 to, to, have, to have done it, um, and um, and it. I mean, one one of the biggest problems, not just for me but for everybody, is at the end of the hell to the thief thing. We completely lost all our confidence. I mean, it was a weird experience and not a weird feeling and not deeply unpleasant. To, you know, basically, we'll go home and forget about everything we'd done having lost all confidence in it. Um, only we could do that. Who or what is the eraser? Who or what? Oh God, I don't know. I mean, th to be honest, that I, I ended up choosing that name because of um, because of what Stanley was doing with the artwork. We were looking at all the old um, German expressionist stuff, as you do, um, and uh, he just started doing all this wave malarkey. To me, uh, uh, there's a certain element that runs through the record of. of a lot of trying to forget about things, trying to sort of put it out of your mind and not being able to. Um, so that, that, that was the extent of it, really. Mm -hmm. Is there 
a, an environmental theme to the record. Yeah, I couldn't help that. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't want to like hammer it over the head, but um, you know, one 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 of the other formative things that was happening at the time was I, I was getting more heavily involved with Friends of the Earth, and the the initial IPCC report came out, which is International Panel on Climate Change, and it had all these. Um, graphs that all just go like that with uh, global temperatures and so on and so on and, uh, and I was looking at that <laughs> I'm trying not to look at it actually uh, and that had a huge effect on me obviously So when does the kind of earliest song on the eraser date from? You could argue that the earliest song on the eraser is the first song on the eraser, and the, the I mean the piano part in that, the crunchy sort of chords, um, was me secretly taping. Well, was it secret or not? I don't know if he remembers me actually putting the dictaphone on top of the piano while he did it. He said, "I've got these chords. I don't know what to do with them." There's Johnny. Yeah. He said, "Well." Um, I mean, he had kind of an idea what to do with them, but I chose to do something completely different with him and not tell him, not okay. own up for about a year. I was like, oh, <coughs> Johnny, you know, you know those chords. Should we talk about some of the individual songs now, maybe? If you want. Put them on. Let's continue the environmental thing. What's maybe the most explicit song to your mind about those concerns? Um, I would say The Clock. The Clock? Actually, okay. the third one. Time is running out for us. Coins in the wishing well. You make believe you're still in charge. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's like a, it's sort of a disco tune, but I can't really actually hear what I'm saying. I'm down there. I mean, that was born out of the anger of watching you know, heads of state around the globe saying, yes, we really must do something about this. Meanwhile... Here are the latest growth figures. And no one actually grappling with the, the, the wider questions. Everyone just sort of shuffling little bits of paper around on the table going, yeah, we really need to do something about this. Just change the time and then we'll know it's happening. The most frightening thing I find about what's going on at the moment is that no one is really engaging with the fact that we can't have endless growth, we can't endlessly consume as human beings. This is no longer like, you know, smelly hippies talking. Anybody who's got time to think about it should be thinking to themselves, well, hang on a minute, there's something fundamentally flawed in the way that we're proceeding. Most of us are still laboring under the illusion this is all going to happen in a couple of hundred years. And it's not. We're talking about 50 years. Most, the most, um, the most sort of fundamental bit of that tune for me is the idea of the a million engines in neutral. You know, if you sit in a Tokyo traffic jam, you can't help thinking that perhaps this isn't the best way to proceed. <laughs> you know, and uh, and uh, and it was, I mean, it was written. The initial music, musical ideas were, were written in a sl in a sleepless night in New York where um, it absolutely it chucked down rain, you know, the size of uh, tennis balls all night long. And just listening to that sound all night long with my laptop and not being able to sleep, but sort of it came from, really. Did you or have you considered doing uh, any solo shows? Uh, I may get my arm twisted, but I have no idea how I'm going to do it yet. If I get the band to do it, that would be great.